day which the Lord has made. Yes, we shall rejoice and be glad.
consolation. Reminding us that it was God's love yes, sir. that has lifted each and every one of us above our circumstances. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let us pray. Bless you. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, as we come now, Lord, to break the bread of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As always, I'm not necessarily asking you for a good message, but rather for a message that will do some good. Yes, to the extent, Lord, that all of us might be blessed. Yes. Let it become less and less of us, mm -hmm. and more and more of you. Yes. Let it become none of us and all of you, yes. so that you and you alone will get the glory. Yes. And it's in your son's matchless name we pray. In the service of God said, Amen. Amen. From Paul's second letter to the church at Corinth, 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and the 9th verse. 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, and the 9th verse. And he said to me, this is Paul talking about what Jesus said to him. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Sufficient. Yes, sir. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. And I want to talk to you this morning from this thought. God is in control. Yes. Yes. It does not matter how their outward circumstances may seem. We have to understand that God is still in control. My brothers and sisters, you never know when you will need the Lord's comfort. You never know when you will need it the most. When God's care and comfort for you will be your only hope oh of facing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I was reading this story the other day about uh, one of our famous hymn writers. Mm -hmm. And his name is Thomas A. Dorsey. Yes, sir. And it said that one day in 1932 that pianist, singer, and songwriter Thomas A. Dorsey received an invitation to come play and sing at a revival in St. Louis, Missouri. Mm. And he left his pregnant wife, Nettie, at home in Chicago. He arrived there and he played and sang and uh, he received all kinds of accolades. The revival was a rousing success. After the revival was over, he received a telegram saying that Nettie, his wife, had died in childbirth. Mm -hmm. And if that wasn't tragic enough, a few hours later he received another telegram telling him that the baby boy had died. Mm -hmm. Filled with grief, Dorsey started second-guessing himself. Should he have stayed in Chicago with his wife, Nick? Had God treated him unjust and unfair? A few days later, it says that Dorsey was sitting down to his piano. And he began to sing some new words and began to play a new song. And I believe that this song, this hymn, is one of the greatest hymns of the church. Yes, sir. These are the words of a hymn that he penned in his grief, realizing after God, Holy Spirit began to comfort him that God was still in control even of his circumstances. Yeah. He wrote this hymn, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Yes, Take my hand. Yes, Have you ever been there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When it all around you was nothing but trouble and, and it seemed like everyone that you talked to, no one understood. My God. So he says, precious Lord, take my hand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lead me on. Yeah. Let me stand. Yeah. I am tired. Yeah. Have you ever been there? Yeah. I am tired. Yeah. He says, I am weak. I am warm. Through the storm. Yeah. Through the storm. Yes, yeah. God. Through the night, yes, Lord. he says, lead me on to the light. Yes, yeah. Take my hand, yeah. take my hand, yeah. precious Lord, yeah. Yeah. and 
and lead me home. Oh, yeah. uh, Dorsey realized that even in the midst of all of this, this great tragedy, yeah. that God was still in control. Yes. My brothers and sisters, is there a problem too big for you to handle alone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or a grief too heavy or great for you to bear? Mm -hmm. You can rest assured that our God cares about you yeah. and that God has everything under his control. Yes, sir. Give it to God. Yes, Lord. You can't handle it, but he can. In the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9, Joshua had to realize and come to the understanding that it was not about him, but it was all about God being in control. Yes. Mm -hmm. Joshua 1 and 9 says, for he says, have I not commanded you, God says to Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Yeah. Do not be afraid nor dismayed. Yeah. For the Lord your God is with you yeah. wherever yeah. you go. Yeah. God was simply saying to Joshua, Joshua, I'm in control yeah. of this situation. Yeah. Yeah. Joshua, you not, may not be handled, able to handle the five Amorite kings and their on. great army, but Joshua, you need to understand that I'm God yeah. and I'm still in control. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait on the Lord. Yeah. Be of good 
overcome. Yes, sir. For he will strengthen your heart. Because he's in control. Yes, sir. Wait on the Lord. Yes. Don't get ahead of him. No. Don't get dismayed thinking that God has abandoned you. Come. David says, I know he's right there with you. Oh, yeah. He says, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Yes, for he will strengthen your heart. Right. And then he seals it with, I wait on the Lord. Yes. I say, wait on the Lord. He'll work it out for you. He'll handle the situation. Then I looked over in Psalms 34. God is in control. Psalms 34. David, the psalmist, once again writes, starting at verse 17, he says, The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears. Have you ever had to cry out to him in the midnight hour? Late in the midnight hour. When the house was quiet, everyone else fast asleep, didn't know what was going on, but you cried out to the Lord in your despair. Yeah. The word says when you cried out to him, he says that the Lord hears. The Lord heard your despairing cry. Yeah. Not only will he hear, he will come by and see about you. Yes, he will. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Isn't the Lord good? Yes, he yeah. is. David says, oh, taste and see yeah. that the Lord is good. Oh, yeah. He delivers them out of all their troubles. Yes. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart My God. and saves those who have a contrite spirit. My brothers and sisters, if you are going through something today, God says he hears. He heard your cry. He's coming by to see about you. And he's going to deliver you out of all your trouble. Yes, and I like verse 19 when it says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yes, yes. If you are a child of God, you're going to go through some things. Yes, yes. Jesus didn't promise us not to have any problems. Yes. But he says he would never leave you alone. Hallelujah. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But David says, but the Lord delivered him out of their all. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you're going to go through some things down here. Yeah. Yeah. This world is not your home. Right. We're just pilgrims passing through. On our way to Jerusalem, the holy land, yeah. the heavenly home. Yeah. He says he delivers them out of them all. Many of our afflictions, but we called on the Lord, yeah. knowing that God was in control. Yes, and God handled every one of them. That's our God. Yeah. And then he said in verse 46 and verse 1, uh, uh, Psalm 46 and verse 1, God is our refuge <laughs> and strength. Mm -hmm. He's a very present help. Right now. Whenever you need him, right now. he's always on time. Yeah. Whenever you need him the most, he'll show up right on time. Right. He never gets in a hurry, but he's never late. Grandma called him an old time God. A very present help. He's not a God that's over there far away where you can't reach him. He's right there with us. He's going through this situation, this problem with us to deliver us and make everything okay. Yeah. And then Second Chronicles. I like this. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. King Jehoshaphat is in trouble. A great army is coming up against him. An army that he knows he can't defeat. The Israelites can't defeat. In short, just sheer numbers, he knows that he's in trouble. But he realized that he's serving a God that's always in control. Yes, sir. And God warned them when times like this would come, that they could turn towards his house mm -hmm. and call on his holy and righteous name. Yes, sir. And he would come to their rescue. Yeah. So we pick it up in 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 13. It says, Now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives, and their children, stood before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benjaniah, the son of Jehiel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the ascent. Mm -hmm. Here's the Holy Spirit coming right in their midst. Oh, 
He says, listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, just that thus says the Lord God to you, mm -hmm. do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude. Yeah. Because the battle is not yours, yeah. but the battle is God. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, God is in control. Yeah. He says to Jehoshaphat and to all of us this morning, yeah. this battle doesn't belong to you. No, no. This battle is the Lord's. Yeah. Why are you fighting? Why are you fussing? Why are you so upset and disdained and discouraged? He says, give it to him. Yeah. He says, I'm still in control. Yeah. Jehoshaphat found out. The Israelites found out that they didn't even need to fight in the battle. The word says for them to just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. When was the last time you cried out to him and you waited patiently on him and God came to your rescue? God is in control. And then in Mark chapter 4 starting at verse 36. Jesus has been teaching and preaching the word. Jesus has become physically tired in his human body. So on the same day it says when evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, let us cross over to the other side. Mm -hmm. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him alone in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose so that the boat was already filled. But Jesus was in the rear part of the ship, fast asleep on a pillow. The disciples came and woke Jesus up and wanted to know from him, Master, teacher, do you care that we're perishing? Mm -hmm. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace! Peace! Be still. He's saying to the wind, Peace! Be still. Yeah. To the sea, rather, and to the wind. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? Don't you know that I've got this? This is in my control. The, the storm caught you by surprise, but it didn't catch God by surprise. He said, let us go over to the other side. Whatever Jesus says to you, for you I want you to do so and so, you don't have to worry about whether or not you're going to accomplish the task that he has assigned to you. God is able. He's able to do what no one else can do. He's going to make sure that you have the resources and the power and the authority to carry it out. He says, let us cross over to the other side. A great wind came up, a storm arose. But he said to the waves and to the, and to the wind, peace, be still. If the storms are raging in your life, no matter what that storm may be, Jesus is still able to speak to your storm. He's able to bring peace where there is chaos. What an awesome God we serve. He's simply saying that I am still God and I'm still in control. I can handle this. And then in Romans chapter 8, a very familiar passage of scripture. Romans 8 verses 26 through 26, uh, 28, says, Romans 8, 26 through 28. Likewise, have you ever, have you ever been going through some things? And you were so choked up that you couldn't even get words out? You tried to pray, but you couldn't pray. The only thing you could do was cry and maybe rock yourself. You didn't have anyone else to rock. But you weren't really rocking yourself. Jesus was rocking you in his own. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your words would not come, but Jesus made a way for your prayer to get through. Mm -hmm. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps. 
in our weakness. Mm -hmm. For we do not know what we should pray for as we are. Mm -hmm. But the Spirit himself <laughs> makes intercessions for us. Mm -hmm. With groanings. The devil can't even understand. The devil would try to block and hinder your prayer from getting through. Even though it's just a groan, the Holy Spirit knows what you are trying to say. He says, with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because he makes intercessions for us according to the will of God. Yeah. God, this is what he or she is trying to say. Yes. Yes. But his words just can't come out. Uh -huh. He's trying to get the words out, but the words just won't come. Mm -hmm. The hurt, the pain is of such magnitude that they can't do anything but groan and shed tears. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit interprets those tears. Interprets those groans and sighs and said, Father, this is what they're trying to say. Yeah. And we know yeah. that all things work together for the good of those who love God. For those who are the call according to his purpose. It may not feel good while you're going through, but he's in control and he's going to work it out for your good. Yeah. And then Romans 8 31 says, What then shall we say to these things? Yeah. If God be for us, yeah. if God be for us, yeah. who can be against us? Yeah. Paul says in verse 37, Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Not because of who we think we are, but we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For new hope I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in the created order shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm here to tell you that God is still in control. is able to separate us from the love of God. A couple of more scriptures and I'm finished. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 and 4. Listen at this. Grace to you. God's unmerited favor. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Father of all mercies and God of all comfort who comforts us in all of our tribulation. Mm. If no one else knows what you're going through, God knows. And God is right there to give you comfort when you need it the most. That you may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble. God is a comfort to us so that in turn we can comfort those who are going through with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. You are, God has comforted you. He wants you to also be a comforter. And listen at this. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Two more scriptures and I'm finished. Therefore, since we know all this, therefore, since we know that he is in control, therefore, since we know that he is with us even when we are going through the valley and the shadow of death, Therefore, we know that he's with us in all of our circumstances. Yeah. He will not abandon us. Uh -huh. He says, therefore, we do not lose heart, yeah. even though our outward man is yeah. perished. Yeah. Yet the inward man yeah. is being renewed yeah. Yeah. day by day. Yeah. It may look like I'm getting weak on the yeah. outside, uh -huh. but on the inside, on, right? I'm getting stronger.
affliction. Which is but for a moment. Trouble don't last all the way. Aren't you glad that storms come and storms go? Trouble don't last all the way. Which is but for a moment. Is working out or working for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to go. We got something better way to get going for us. Verse 18 says, while we do not look at the things which are seen, yes, sir. for the things that are seen on the temple, the things which are not seen yeah. are eternal. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We don't look at the things that are seen. Yeah. That's why we walk by faith. Yeah. Yeah. We walk by faith yeah. and not by sight. My brothers and sisters, God is still in control. Last scripture, Paul says, Paul says, after knowing all this, after being instructed by the master himself, see, I had a thorn in the flesh. This thing had troubled me. And I felt like in order to do God's work, God had to get, me, get this thing out of me or relieve me out of my distress. But I found out that God says to me, Paul, it's not about you. See, if you, if you, if you are healing this thing, you get the big head. Do you think that. that you are doing all this missionary work yes. and all this great work for God? Yes. You're doing it for me. Yes. But Paul, listen, I'm going to work through the problem. Yes. Listen, and he said to me, Paul says, my grace, yes. my unmerited favor, my grace, yes. my grace is sufficient, Paul. Yes.